Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a look at Castle Combo. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to the castle, everybody, where we are trying to fill our courtyards with all kinds of folk, both from the castle and from the nearby village, to score as many points as possible. I'm going to show you how this works today in a two player run through. Here's my uh, starting situation I got 15 coins and two keys, as does Jen. I will be the first player and what am I going to do on my turn? Well, it's really simple. I am at this turn going to grab one of these three villagers and add it to my own little three by three grid of cards. Uh, I will immediately take advantage of whatever the special power of that card is and then uh, my turn will be over. We're going to do that nine times, and at the end of the game, each player has a three-by-three three completed courtyard full of folks, and you score it up. So, what do I want to grab right from the get-go of these three villagers? Well, one thing I should mention before I pay zero, two, or three of my 15 starter coins, remember I said I've got two keys? These keys can be used before I recruit somebody to do one of two things. I could spend a key Key to move the messenger up here to the castle folk. And then that means I could draft a castle card instead of a village card. Or alternatively, I could spend this key to wipe these three out and draw three more because I'm looking for something uh, in particular. Now at the beginning of the game, I haven't really started setting myself up for combo, so I don't think I'm going to do either of those things. Any of these would be nice to have. But not all of them right now. This beggar here says, well, first of all, I don't have to pay anything. I'd get the beggar for free. But the reward I immediately get is one coin per card that's in my 3x3 three three grid. Um, and my grid is empty. So this would be better to do a little bit later. I could take it right now and I'd get one coin because this would be the one card I'd have in my, um, you know, my grid. But this is something to snag a little bit later. So... Do I want the um, armorer or the potter? Well, basically this potter says, get two coins immediately on each pouch I've got in my area. And what's that mean? Well, that is a way to score points at the end of the game. Normally, if you have any cash left over, it's not worth anything at game's end. But what you can do is you can take your leftover cash and put it on cards that have this purse uh, symbol. And that means you could turn them, the, your leftover money, into points. So, uh, and when I place this, it says, hey, put two coins on every purse. Now, this purse can only hold four, and each coin in it will be worth two points. So, this is going to come with four points on it, guaranteed. And then I could get four more points by having two coins left over at the end of the game, if I take the potter. If I take the armor instead, um, well, at the end of the game, I will get three points per knight that is in the same row and column as the uh, armorer. And if I look up here, as you might imagine, the uh, castle folk are where the knights are going to show up. No knights have appeared yet. Instead, we got a couple of faith-based characters and another craftsperson. So if I were to take this, I'd want to be on the lookout for knights for the rest of the game. I might even start using my keys to clear stuff out to try to make knights appear and so that I could uh, score points. Alternatively, I could go for this one, and I think this is the one I like the most. We're going to get some pottery going on in my castle. So, cost two, I spend five, get three and change, and this is the first card in my three by three grid. The next card I play is going to have to go orthogonally adjacent uh, to it, and right now it says, hey, put two coins on each purse I've got, and I've only got just this one. So, I've just made two points. Or I'm sorry, no, four points, because each coin in this purse is worth two points at the end of the game. And so I'm going to want to keep at least two bucks on hand at the end of the game so I can fill the purse up the rest of the way. Alrighty, a new card comes out, and you will notice um, the potter was the only one of these three cards that had this little symbol. That symbol says, hey, after the, I'm recruited, move the messenger to the castle. So that's what we're going to do. And what that means is I've just given Jen uh, opportunity to recruit from the castle instead of the village. Um, if I had chosen either of these, then Jen would have been going with villagers as well. So what is Jen going to go for? 
the uh, devout lady, the pilgrim, or the glass blower. Well, I'll tell you right now, if this were real Jen here, there's no choice about it. Of course, she'd take the glass blower because my wife Jen is a glass artist in real life. But that aside, it's still a pretty cool card. Um, it's going to be the most expensive, or not the most expensive, the uh, Pilgrim is. But this would immediately give her one point for, or I'm sorry, um, one coin for every faith-based person in her grid, which would be nothing, and one for each craft person. So she'd get one back. So it really only costs four. But at the end of the game, she'd get four points per pair for pairs of craft people and faith. And if she looks up here, there's a lot of faith and craft people out there. Jen could definitely start drafting with that in mind. But let's not jump on that one right yet. What else could Jen go for? This Pilgrim is interesting. It's the most expensive. This says, hey, for the rest of the game, you will get a one coin discount whenever you recruit from the village. Uh, because all the, the villagers will follow the Pilgrim. And four points at the end of the game per different faction in the same row. So this could be eight points. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 12 points, because if you know it's a faith based in the row, she'd also want something, you know, two other cards in the same row as this that are different faiths. Or I'm sorry, not different faiths, different factions. So that's why this one's expensive. This one is a big deal. And getting it in the first round, meaning you get a discount on every well, maybe every recruit you do for the rest of the game, as long as you keep recruiting from the uh, uh, that's pretty cool. Her third choice, this devout uh, faith-based uh, lady, one point per empty space. There is no better time to recruit this person than right now. Make the devout your very first one. You will make an, um, eight coins immediately. And at the end of the game, you'll get 10 points if you have no craftspeople. I guess the uh, devout, they don't want people working. So that's tempting too, and it's the cheapest one. Wow, those are all awesome. You can see why it might have made sense for me to spend a coin so that instead of recruiting from here, I could have recruited from there and I would have had first dibs on it. And um, But hey, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my uh, potter. It didn't cost me very much. We'll see how things play out. So Jen's going to take any of those unless she wants to spend her key to move back down here or wipe them out. But no, those are all amazing. And the only tough choice is which one to get. Honestly, I think Jen is going to save her or go as cheap as she can. She is going to spend four and get this devout. Alrighty, and I'm going to have Jen's uh, three by three go over this way and mine will go that way. So there's room on camera. So right now, immediately one coin per empty space. There are eight empty spaces. Jen just made eight bucks. She is loaded. Right, and now if she gets the glass blower later, the glass blower would give her two extra coins, one for itself and one for having a faith-based person. So that's pretty nice. Okay, and you'll notice it said, hey, don't move down to back to the village. So we get the goldsmith out and now it is my turn. And I am not recruiting from the village unless I want to spend a key. I'm recruiting from the upper crust. So what do I want to get? Well, hmm. Again, these are all amazing, including this new goldsmith uh, that is both a craftsperson and a scholarship person, so they fulfill two different factions. And also, when you grab them, you get one key for every double person. I already have a double person. So if I recruit her, I'll get two more keys that I can use to control my fate over the rest of the game. And I will get six points if um, the goldsmith is in the leftmost column of my courtyard by the end of the game. If I put it in the top left, middle left, or bottom left, it's just a guaranteed six points. And they're giving me more factions that might pay out for more stuff later on. So that's pretty tempting. Uh, let's see. What else? Although, man, this Pilgrim, again, is pretty amazing because of the discount for the rest of the game. One less coin for every village. Um, right. Oh, man, that's a tough one. But again, that's why they're the most expensive. Right now, I've got the cash, though. I'm inclined to do it. And, um... 
hopefully I'll be able, right, well, here's the deal. I know Jen is not going to take the goldsmith. She'll never do it because the goldsmith is a craftsperson. And this, um, you know, the devout person says Jen will not get her 10 points if she ever recruits a craftsperson. So now I know because of that, Jen is never going to recruit those two characters. She might use her key to wipe them away because they might be good for me. But I know they're probably going to stick around. So are these as well. That's a lot of crafts, people. Jen going for this has really hamstrung herself. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm going to go for the Pilgrim. I'm going to go big. Alrighty, so that's going to cost me six. And um, the only thing it does is uh, for the rest of the game, not immediately, um, pretty much all of the abilities of these cards go into effect immediately, except for discount ones. The next time I recruit, if it's from the village, I get a one coin discount. And also, I get four, um, uh, four uh, per, per, right, I already talked about this, per unique faction. So what the heck, let's go on ahead and put it right here. So now, uh, this could still be my top, middle, or my bottom row. This could be the left or the right side of that row. But uh, one thing I know is, this is now going to be at worth 8 points because I've got a faith and a craftsperson in this row. If my row ends with another faction that's other than faith or craftsperson, this would be another 4 points for me. Okay, I'm happy with that. And it said, hey, zip back on down to the village. And so it is Jen's turn. And Jen is in a sticky wicket. Because Jen does not want to recruit either of these craftspeople because of her devout followers. She doesn't want to lose those 10 points. She could recruit the beggar, but now is a terrible... Remember I talked about this. Terrible time to recruit the beggar. It would come in. It would say, hey, get one coin per full space. The beggar would go wherever. And so Jen would just get two coins. Although, uh, she also has the potential. I mean, this is a faith person. There's another faith person up there. So Jen wouldn't get much in the short term. But she had such a huge windfall. I think she's going to do it. Now, instead, she could spend a key to come back up here and recruit one of them. Or she could spend a key to wipe those out. But, no, Jen's going to take it. Jen's going to take a shot. She's going to get the beggar, who is totally free. Uh, she puts it in place. She'll put it right here to be in the same row or column as a faith-based character. So this is worth two points now. And she immediately gets one coin per full thing in her grid. So she just made two more simoleons. And you will notice it says, hey, don't stay there. Don't move. So now I am recruiting from the village, which suits me just fine because I get a discount whenever I recruit from the village. So I'm going to snag one of those three. Um, both of these give me more ongoing discounts. This means if I have this stonemason, I'd get two discounts per um, every time I recruit from the village. This one gives me a discount on, on everywhere. Um, but I have yet to see any knights come out, so I'm a little nervous about committing to that. I wouldn't have to burn through all my keys just to go find those knights. What else have I got here? Well, wow, this is interesting. This um, w uh, winemaker. I think I like this one. I'm going to spend two coins, and I'm going to put them over here. I have now finished a row, and I get, um, well, I don't get much. I get one coin per villager. I've got two villagers, so that is two coins back. So it was basically free for me to recruit this one. And now this says, hey, get two points for every unique faction in this column. Now, because I finished this row, this is done. That's faith, that's um, craftsperson, and that's uh, scholarship and peasant. Is So I got 12 points off this card. And I've already got four points off of this and two points off of that. That's looking pretty good to me. And now I need to do something other, like put a faith person here or a knight down there or something like that, something other than these two so that this can pay out. Now, I'm getting this a little early. Um, oh, but wait, let's not forget. I paid two. I shouldn't have. I should have paid one because of my discount. So I'm pretty happy with that. We'll see how it goes. And it says, hey, stay down here. So now Jen is recruiting from the from the commoners. All righty. And remember, oh, Jen does not like this. Every single one of them is a craftsperson. So Jen is not going to recruit any of them and lose her 10 points. So she's going to spend a key. And what is she going to do? Is she going to wipe these out or is she going to move back up here? You can do one or the other, not both. So... She can take a chance, and she can only do it once, right? You can only pay one key per turn. 
So, oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, keys are worth something. They're worth a point at the end of the game each, whereas money isn't worth anything unless you've got a purse to put it in. Jen would, I mean, Jen's got a lot of money. She'd like to find somebody with a purse. Nobody out there has a purse right now. Um, and one, two, three, four, five. This is the only, only the nun could she recruit. And here's the thing. The nun is a faith-based character. And remember, this beggar wants to be surrounded by faith-based characters. So I think Jen is going to head back up north, and she is going to recruit this nun, which costs her three. And so she wants to put it in the same row or column as the nun. What the heck? She'll just go ahead and put it right there. And now this says, hey, make a coin for every castle person you've got. So Jen gets two coins back. And this is... Go oh, wait. No, 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 no. Ooh, this is a tough choice. So this is three points for every faith in this row. So if Jen puts this down here, let's say, then this is a six-point card because there are two faith-based people in this row. But this um, peasant is uh, reducing the limit of this. But on the other hand, it is feeding it. So Jen could still go like this, but now she wants to get two faith-based people here. But don't forget, Jen wants to put faith-based people here and here as well to be next to... Because she's already... Yeah. yeah. Oh, and there are no more faith-based people. Who knows if more are going to come out? She'll just go on ahead and take the guaranteed. So this is a six-point card. This is a ten-point card. And this is now a four-point card. All righty. And that was that. And by the way, this said, go back to the village. And so we're back to me. And I'm happy to be back here because this only cost me four. This only cost me two. This only cost me two. Thanks to my pilgrim. So what am I going to recruit now? Well, I have to admit, I'm kind of tempted for this blacksmith. Uh, because it is, uh, you know, right off the bat, when you get them, you either get one coin for every royalty of one of your neighbors. Now, that means another player. Jen has not recruited any royalty yet. So, this would be no coins. Or instead, I could get two keys. But more importantly, at the end of the game, two points per every double character. I've already got two, and this would be one. So, this is a six-point card right out of the gate. So, yeah, let's pay five. Minus one with my discount. Let's pay four. And recruit the blacksmith. And you know what? Let's go on ahead and put it in... Well, okay, this is kind of dangerous. Putting it in this row... Remember, this is two points for every unique... Um, you know, or per different type of faction in this column. So now I've got one, two, three, four factions in that column. So that is looking pretty... Pretty, pretty good, says stay here. So Jen is now recruiting from the village. And what is she going to snag next? All the way before she does, don't forget, I was only thinking about how great this will be at the end. I do get two keys right now. Because since Jen has no royalty, I did not, get, I did not take advantage of that. I just took two keys. And Jen is in a pickle again because still, the majority of recruitable people are craftspeople. That devout is really slowing her down. So she could spend a key to come up here and get the Apothecary, which would give her a discount for the rest of the game on recruiting castle folk, and three um, points for every scholar in the same column as the Apothecary. So that's something. Or she could go for this Stable Boy, who's interesting. Stable Boy is both a peasant and a member of nobility, but neither of those are craftspeople. She'd get um, one key immediately per nobility, so just one key out of this. Three coins for every peasant in the same column. Or Jen spends her last key, but she's down to her last key. So I think she's going to save it. That stable boy isn't bad. She'll spend um, five uh, and get four and change and take this stable boy. Now, this stable boy does not want to go in either of these spaces because Jen still wants to put faith-based people in these two spots here. But it can go orthogonally based on anything. So Jen will just go on ahead and put it over here. Now, she has created another problem for herself. She wants to put a faith-based person here, but she also wants to put a peasant here for this card. This card is worth three points if there's a peasant in this space. This card is worth two additional points if there's a faith-based person. In this space. So it is likely that there is going to be somebody uh, who shows up you know, in the same way this is both royalty and peasant, there will be a um, faith-based uh, peasant to come along sooner or later. But will it show up in time? So is Jen going to risk that? Well, if she doesn't, she pretty much, because of this, has no choice. She has to burn her last key, and then she's risking um, who knows what. So I think, I think she's going to take a chance. 
Take a chance on Stable Boy is what she says because she's an ABBA fan. And who isn't? All righty. So, and this said stay here. So now, again, I'm happy because I am once again in the village where I continue to get my discounts. And, oh, look at this. A Master of Arms. A double soldier. And you know how much I love double characters. Two additional points off of the blacksmith for every double character. Although one problem is putting it in this column. Um, well, but it doesn't matter. This doesn't say they have to be in the column. I could put it someplace else and still be able to put um, you know, somebody of faith in this area. There's actually six different shields, so there's still a chance to get more. And um, so this would be another two points off of there. And wasn't there somebody who cared about recruiting? Um, yeah, it's the armorer. So if I get the man at arms later on, I definitely want to get the armorer as well. Interesting. If, or I could get the man of arms now, put it here. It's next to a uh, warrior, and then could put the other one over there, let's say. That's not bad. That's coming into focus. Let's do it. Let's get the uh, armorer for three minus one, so it only costs me two. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right there. All righty. So they could still, this would be my top or my middle row. And this says immediately, oh, not immediately, or not immediately, this is the one that isn't immediate. For the rest of the game, I now get a discount of two here and one up there. And this is already worth three points for having a, uh, she, a military person to the left. And if I get lucky and get this Master of Arms, that'll be two more shields to the right. So uh, that'll be uh, six points plus whatever it's worth. Oh my gosh. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's another... It's another purse character. Wait just a second, folks. I wanted to get that armor and then get the Master of Arms, but Jen would want this. Jen's been waiting. I know. She's got so much money. She's been waiting for a purse character. I can't let her have that. I've got to take the Master of Arms for just one instead. Because I know Jen doesn't want to take this one anyway, because again, it's a... Right, so I'm going to take this one instead. And I'm going to put it over here hoping that I'll get the Master of Ar or the Armor later. But I'm pretty confident I will. Right. So, this says, hey, get one point for every um, Knight Shield I've got. That's, I've got two on the board. No, I've got one, two, three. So, get three coins. One, two, three. Nice, nice, nice. Because I was getting a little broke. And a new one comes out, and it stays down here. Now, this was a gamble, because I'm hoping to get this armor. I know Jen won't take it. But Jen could use her key and wipe all of these out. That's a possibility. And if she doesn't, you better believe I'm going to get that armor no matter what. And here's the deal. Jen knows I want that armor. So, and she doesn't want either of these. Now, this, uh, this fisherman is new. This fisherman says, hey, recruit castle people and make it just four points if you put it in any corner. So that's easy peasy. And remember, this says three points for every um, peasant, north or south. So putting this down here means six points for these two peasant shields. Um, right. That's pretty good. But if Jen does that, she knows I'm going to get that armor. Oh, by the way, oh, and again. Um, right, 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 right. So, uh, is Jen going to take that? Or is she going to spend her key, wipe all of these things out so that I can't get what's really good for me? The problem is, this is pretty good for her. Uh, so she's going to do it. She's going to pay two. She's going to hire the fisherman. She's going to put it right there. It's in a corner like it wants to be. So now that this needs a corner, then the rest of Jen's cards have to come over here for this to be considered a corner. So she can get four points off of this. But in the meantime, she just got six points off of this for having two peasants. All righty. So she paid all that. A new one comes out. It's a, And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this worked. I, it was a gamble, but it paid off. I am now going to pay two and get that armorer. Alrighty. And doesn't do anything for you other than um, discounts for the rest of the game. And I didn't move, so now it is Jen's turn. And Jen wants to be up here. She gets discounts up here now, not over there. Does she want that brigand? This will give her a key per um, castle folk of one of her neighbors. She looks over at me. I only have one castle folk, and she doesn't have any other neighbors. So this is seven bucks for only one key plus seven points. Although, here's the problem. So Jen doesn't particularly want this, but this is perfect for me. This is a seven-pointer for me, plus it's two keys for me. So this is a nine-pointer for me. But Jen doesn't want it. 
She doesn't want those other ones either. Although, if she does take this, at least one thing, it's three more points because it's another peasant with the stable boy. And she could still potentially get seven if she puts a peasant there. But she can't have molt. I mean, she can only get seven points out of it once. So that's still a lot to pay. And she's not getting her discount. Oh. Oh. Is it worth paying the key to come up here and grab one of those with the discount? Right. Is this glass? No, she doesn't want any of them because, again, that... So I think Jen's going to spend her key. It's her last one. And this is the biggest gamble yet to say goodbye to all of this stuff because she knows how much I want that mercenary. So three new ones come out. Jen has no keys, so she's got to recruit one of them. Okay. Okay, first of all, yay, she says. No craftspeople. Other things. An executioner, a barbarian, and a monk. <gasps> a monk. I can't believe it. I promised there'd be one, and Jen found it. She is recruiting the monk. Uh, she has to pay full price for it. Four. She will take this monk. She will put it right here. It is a peasant for the stable boy. It is a religious person for the beggar. That is the perfect spot for it. Amazing. She gets one coin per faith. One, two, three. I'm sorry, not coin, key. So she just got three keys. Oh, yeah. Oops. I haven't punched out my little holes on the keys yet. All right. Uh, there we go. Three keys. Nice. Oh, you don't have to take that. I mean... Uh, she'll just take three singles. But the reason there's those triples there is because you might have a strategy that makes you end up with like 10 or 15 keys at the end of the game. Because remember, these keys are worth points too. Wow. That was a gamble and it totally paid off. And the monk says, by the way, head north, messenger. And so now I'm up here where I only get a discount of one instead of down here where I get a discount of two. Okay. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I got enough keys. I'm going to spend one and I'm going to come back down here anyway. Um, because of all this stuff that came out, well, maybe not. Let's hold on a second. Man, there's a lot of options here. So I'm really intrigued by this woodcutter, but the problem is the woodcutter is free. Um, so my discounts don't really help, but it will get me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coins for every full space. And it's worth five points if it's in the rightmost column. So I put it right here, right? So that's pretty tempting. Um... Just for the, for the huge influx of cash, because I'm down to seven bucks. Now, you might be wondering, hey, what happens if you run out of money? And I thought by now I probably would have demonstrated that, but this game so far is working out uh, different than some of the other games Jen and I have played. You can take any card you want whenever you feel like it, and instead of paying whatever it is, you can flip it over face down, whereupon you will immediately get six coins and two keys, and then you just place it out like normal. It does nothing for you. It has no powers. It has no abilities. But it's a way uh, if you've uh, you know spent yourself into a corner. And you could still win doing that. Jen has beaten me being totally broke and spending a whole turn just refilling coins and keys. Uh, but anyway, so I'm tempted by that for a guaranteed five plus a lot of money, so I won't have to worry about money for my last, and because I'll still have two more purchases after that. Um, right. I don't have any scholars. So, no, that's not true. I have one scholar. So if I put over here, that's a three-point card. The apothecary is not great for me. The glass blower. I do not have any faith. I do have several war or craftsmen. One, two, three, four, five. But still, I mean, the points are only for pairs. And I haven't gotten any faith. No, I do have one faith. So this is four points. If I could get some more faith, there aren't any out there. That feels a little dangerous. This one is two keys per double character. And I've got one, two, three, four. That is five keys. That is five points. That's hard to say no to. Now, it is kind of a bummer. To get the six points off it, I'll have to put it over here, which means I will not be getting any more points because I'm not putting new f f um, shields. But it is a lot of keys. So let's do it. Let's spend three. Oh, but that's the thing. If I spend three, now I'm down to one buck. But if I'm moving down here, there are some free things down here. So I feel like I can handle anyway. So I'm going to spend three with my discount. Recruit the goldsmith. The goldsmith says, hey, move south. And um, this, for this six points, I got to put it in the leftmost column. So I'm going to put it right there. Nice. And now I am down to only one coin. Maybe I will have to demonstrate what happens if you run out of money. Although, no, I don't. I'm hoping to... I mean, well, the question is, am I going to get that woodcrafter or is Jen going to take it? Jen's got a lot of money. And she has no purses to put all this money in. Jen needs to start spending big. Because money isn't worth anything 
unless she's got a purse. And I've snapped, and it's ironic. I've got two purses and no money to put them in them, but I've kept them away from Jen. So, Jen's got a bunch of keys now. Is there anything down here, or is it worthwhile to come up here and spend big and get something? Well, again, Jen has no scholars, so the Chancellor isn't great. The Chancellor would be worth six points at the end of the game. And she would get one key for the one scholar that is the Chancellor. Also, another thing, I now have two scholars, so that's better for me than her. The Apothecary, again, wants scholars. And then the Glassblower wants faith and craftspeople in general never have a craftsperson. Yikes. So Jen could come up here, but she has to take one of them. She can't move up there and then spend another key and wipe them out. So is Jen like anything down here? Well, hey, this is a bunch more money that Jen has no use for. But she also knows, I need this desperately. It might be worth it for Jen to eliminate this just so I can't get any cash. This one, um, one coin per, uh, what you call it, um scholar that your neighbor has and i've got two scholars so jen could get two coins or two keys which is what she'd probably take and 10 points if she has no scholars wow so that barbarian is interesting that's a guaranteed 10 points for her if she stays away from scholarship and two or you know two coins or two keys but here's actually what jen is thinking Jen wants to bleed me dry. Jen knows I'm broke. Jen knows this is my salvation. Jen says, oh, I'm going to use the key to open the door that makes all these people go away. And Jen's going to get something else. She gave up 10 points for herself to force me. Ah, but it didn't work. Because remember, I've got a two discount, so I could recruit one of those two for free because I've got one two. So both of those are free. I could, and this one only costs me two. But anyway, so anyway, Jen made her choice. Didn't work out as her, well as her last one, but still, she's stuck here. She's going to recruit one of these now. Um, one per oh one dollar per peasant of your neighbor, and how many peasants? Oh, I, I only have one peasant. Wow, or two keys. One, oh, one um, coin per craftsperson of your neighbor. And I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's five coins. She, what she was really hoping it was when she cleared this stuff out, another purse would come out, and a purse did not come out. Or one per peasant that she has, or uh, and one key per faith-based person of the neighbor. And I've only got one faith person. Ugh. Wow. Neither of us want to recruit this person, though, because they're nine points if there's no faith, and both of us have faith. So nobody wants to get the witch. Three points per soldier. Jen knows I'd like this because, hey, then that is nine points for that column. And Jen has no soldiers, but there is still a chance she might get some soldiers. Although she also wants to put faith right here. What is the chance she'd get a soldier slash faith person and put it right there? That would be pretty amazing. So this did not work out as well as Jen wanted. But So right now, if she's not taking any of these for herself, she needs to think, what does she not want to give to me? I think it will be this one. She will spend two because she does not get a discount down here. She gets a discount up there. Um, right, and she either takes two keys, which are two points, or one coin for every... So she takes five coins, but she's got enough coins. For her last two recruits, she thinks. So she'll just take two keys because at least that's two points. And she will put it here, let's say. Alrighty. And so now she wants to put soldiers in these two spots because each soldier she puts down there, uh, you know, this is worth three for itself. Plus, this could be a nine point card. And it says, don't move, stay down here. And oh my gosh, Jen wasted her key. I'm still going to get stuff. But still, she did not want me to have a lot of money. So I've got keys. I could come up here, but then I would not be able to afford any of these things. So I'm going to stay down here. That was the other thing. Jen could have come up here to force up here, but Jen could see I have enough keys. I would have come back down. So anyway, what do I want? Do I want the squire, the uh, militia man, the witch, or do I want to throw a point away and wipe them out? So this squire likes being in the same row and column as craftspeople, and this spot is perfect for that? So what the heck? Let's just do it. Let's do it to it. Let's take this squire. Doesn't cost me anything. I will put it right there. Um, and uh, this is perfect because it's a soldier. And this armor wanted soldiers in the same row and column. And this is another. Now it gives me a discount of two up here and three down here. 
All right, um, but that'll be for future purchases. And we stay down low, and Jen's, okay. And Jen can't believe it. There's still no freaking purse. She can't believe it. All right, so what just came out? The shepherd. Well, remember, Jen was like, hey, because I put this, I want to get some soldiers. So now she could get that militia man. Although this militia man won't be worth much because it wants soldiers in the same row. And Jen has no other soldiers anywhere. So it's not going to do anything. Other than make her a bunch of money she doesn't need. Does she come up here? Again, she's still weak on scholars. She can't do that. So I think she's going to risk it again and wipe all these out. And she brings out the philosopher, the revolutionary, and the doctor. All righty. So two scholars and a peasant. No soldiers to help this person. So this person just lost three points. No faith-based people. But she can leave this open for another faith-based person if she puts something down here. And it's got to be one of these three now. So this is pairs of philosophy and peasants. She has no philosophy. So she, she would have one. So this would be worth four points because she's got several peasants. And it could be worth eight if she gets another philosopher. This is ten if there's no warriors. And unfortunately, Jen has one. So, this is, so nobody wants this one. And this is a key per peasant she's got, per, or per, per villager. And she's got one, two, three, four, five. This is five keys. And no, she has one noble. If she had no nobles, this revolutionary would be perfect for her. This would be a 14-point card. And here's the deal. Jen knows it's huge for me because I've got a lot of peasants and I have no... So Jen can't let me have that. They're all, I mean, this is, this is keeping this from um, uh, me is the equivalent of nine points for her since we're playing a two-player game. And she will still get five points out of it. So that's what she does. Ouch. All righty. And she'll put it down here, hoping for one more opportunity to fill either a faith or a soldier right there. And this says, go north. The peasants are revolting. All right. And so... My last recruit, and I'm up here now. Although I've got plenty of keys, and I have one dollar, so I've got I've got what now? I've got a discount of two up top, don't I? I've got a discount of there and there. So this would only cost me one. I could afford it. I can't afford either of those. Do I want this? Philosophers. I have no philosophers. No, I do, but I'd have to put this over here, and I can't. So I don't think any of those are any good for me. So I'm going to spend a key. Giving up a point to either wipe these and try again or come down here. I feel like I should come down here because both of those are free for me with my double discount. And this one I can't afford. And oh my God, Jen can't freaking believe it. Another freaking purse showed up. So yeah, I'm going to come down here and keep this from Jen. Boom. All right, it was two minus my discounts means it's free. That was my final placement. And this says immediately put two coins on every purse. And I have three purses. So I put two on this one. I put two more on this one. And this one is now full, so I can't put any here. And I put two on this one. Unbelievable. All right, and that, and that was it, right? Two coins on every purse, so my three purses. And now... And uh, that stays down here. So Jen, this is her last recruit. There are no faith-based. There are no soldiers. She has keys. She could do a Hail Mary. This one, and she has no philosophy. So that's, well, th no, this is one point per peasant. So this would be a, pe or, uh, you know, villager. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be a six-point card and no money, which doesn't do her any good anyway. Um, this would be... This would be your first. So this would be a four-point card. That is a six-point card. This could have been a 10, except she does have one freaking thing. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So none of these are any good for her. This is the best of them. Are any of these any good? Again, both of these care about philosophy. Three points. Oh, but this is points per castle person, right? She gets, she'll get one key, and it's two points per castle. So that would be two, three, four, five, six. So... So this will get her six points and one. So it'll get her seven points, but she'll have to lose one. So she'll make six points off of this as opposed to this. But it doesn't matter. She can't afford it. It's $6. And this one uh, is only three points. 
And this one, she doesn't want. So, if she, so she either takes this for the guaranteed six, or she spends a coin and goes for broke. Jen cannot believe it. And what was this one again? Oh, she can't afford this one, right? Because she has a discount up there. So that really costs two, and that costs five, and she still can't afford it. She can't afford the doctor, who would be only four points anyway. All right, Jen's going to go for it. Let's see what she gets. Actually, it doesn't matter if she gets a purse now, because she has enough money to, to put money in her purse regardless. A farmhand, a spy, and a traveler, and she must pick one of those. So she threw away a point. Was it worth it? Six points if this spy goes in the center. It can't do that. Two points for every person that was free to recruit. This is nothing. Two points per um, coin in the purse. Finally. it does. It's not a soldier. It's not faith. But finally. All right. And it goes up in case there are more players. But that's it. Okay, folks. That was a game. And now we tally things up. Uh, what's the final score? Well, first of all, we fill up our purses. This purse can hold five. So it takes all four of Jen's coins. And I've got one coin left. I'll put it in this one because this could have held nine coins, the beekeeper. Right. And uh, now, so uh, it's three to two so far. And then we just tally up the uh, score. And the game comes with a little hoozy madoozy. Let me go on ahead and do it. Why not? We're here. D. Come on. Except if my pen works, that pen is dead. Let's try a different pen if I can reach that far. Yes, I can. All righty. D and J. Oh, I'm sorry. For you folks, it should be an R. Rado. Jen calls me duck in real life. But so Rado versus Jen. All righty. So this, um, what should we call it? Uh, card. All right. Okay. Our keys. I have three. Jen has two. Fine. So this card is two points per double shield. So that's one, two, three. Oh, sorry. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's a good start. Next up, this is three per um, soldier shield in the row and column. One, two, three, four. So four times three is 12. This one is two points per key in the bag. So this one is only four. Can't all be winners. This one is two points per different shield, a unique shield in this uh, column. So that's one, two, three, four, right? Because then this is a repeat and that's a repeat. So that's four times two is eight. Uh, th uh, this one is two points per coin. So that is eight. Uh, this one is four per unique shield in this row. So that's one, two, three, four. Wow. Right? One, two, three, four. Yep. That is um, four times four is 16. That's huge in this game. Six points if it's in the leftmost column. Easy peasy. Uh, two points for every worker in this row and column. That's two, four, six, eight. And uh, down here in this corner, two per every coin. Two, four, six. Yowza. All righty. And Jen, meanwhile, uh, looking at her, this one up here is three for every um, soldier. Unfortunately, did not do as well as she'd hoped in this row. That one is three. This one is 10 if there's no workers. And she never got any workers. So that uh, hopefully that pays off because that she really limited herself with that. But that's why she made it. All right. Um, next up, three per peasant in this row and column. One, two, three, four. That is 12. Next up, two per coin. That is eight. Next up, two per faith person in this row and column. One, two, three. Oh, that was not as good as we'd hoped. One, two, three shields. Yep. So that is six. Um, all right. And then this one is two per peasant in this row and column. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a little bit better. That is 12. And then this one over here, nine, if there's no royalty, if so that's zero, zero for that one. Um, I don't remember why she did that now. I'm sure it was to keep me from getting it or something like that. All right, because I had none. All righty, three per um, faith in this column. There's only two, so that is six. And then four if it was in a corner. Folks, uh, if you would like to go on ahead and add that up, you can feel free to do so. 
Or if you turned on the Klingon subtitles, it's there at the bottom of the screen, because I'm sure Paulo has already done that, because I don't want to embarrass myself anymore. But that's going to be it, folks. That was a quick run-through of Castle Combo. Now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen, or follow the links down in the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.